So now we have this geometry all set. We are going to move from here to creating the mesh. So we can even close everything we're not using for the moment. We're basically done with geometry and physical groups for a little while at least. Click on the mesh, click on 2D, and right now you see it's pretty awful. That's a terrible mesh. What you can do is double click or right click or yeah, it would usually be right click. Click on mesh options, mesh over there, general. This I usually set to right around 10. It basically defines how how good the mesh looks. And then I usually set this to right around 0 0.06. You can completely change these numbers based on the individual model you're working on. That's just where I set it about. And then these are important at some point in the future. We won't really look at them much right now, but they define the general shape of the mesh. So now if we click 1D and 2D again, we'll have a much better mesh. Still not too great, so we can add another little refinement. Let's just say 0 0.03. Close that. 1D, 2D, that's better. It's getting pretty all right. It's probably good enough to do a simulation on. On the other hand, you could easily go much, much finer. You could go all the way down to like 0, 0.05 on the QD. Now we have a great mesh. And anytime you want to know anything about how this program is working, you can click down here and it brings up like a little terminal type thing showing everything you've done so far. So that last little bit, we created 14,248 nodes and 28,570 elements. That right there was significantly more than the free version, the student version of ANSYS can even do. So we have already far exceeded its capabilities and we're up already to the level of extremely expensive programs without even doing much at all. So that's pretty awesome. And this, this program has been used by many, many graduate students for thermodynamics and I imagine for structural type analysis as well. But now I will show you uh, something really useful for when you're creating a mesh especially for this project. So I'll just back to you, 0 0.06, and build it again. There is something called a transfinite curve. Basically, if you click that, you can add the number, the multiple number of points that you want as a refinement along a specific edge. So let's say we want the left to be refined multiple of 10. We just click E, and we do the same exact thing for the right side. Click it, and click E. We could have done both of those, just click both of them at the same time and click E. Like, we can do that for top and bottom, just one, two, click E, click Q, and remesh, and it's already different looking. So now if we change the refinement, it will create a completely different view. See, now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I guess that one's the 10th. Then we have 10 along this. So that defines the number of nodes along an edge. So if we had in, instead defined this as a refinement of 100, we could have 100 nodes along that edge or along this one or along that one, regardless of what type of refinement we give it. So even if we go down to 0 0.005, it basically breaks because it knows it can't do that with only 10 and 10 and 10 and 10. So that's something 
good to keep in mind. And in the next video, I'll show you how we can easily control all of these factors without even being necessarily in this program, just being in a script that looks a little bit like any coding script, a little like C. So that's what we'll do.